Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about throttling. So what is throttling? Throttling is a way to limit access to resources by a period of time. These resources could be literally an endpoint in our API or literally all the system that we have available for our users. Depending on how we use to limit those resources, we could be limiting the actual users, maybe the specific applications, or maybe we, sh we can be limiting everything, every single thing that we have in our system. Now, uh, what is throttling used for? Throttling is use used to improve scalability because we can limit uh, requests to our API for a certain period of time and avoid, you know, crashing and whatnot. While elasticity kicks in, I will be talking about the elasticity in a different episode. Also, it's a way to prevent um, malicious users to take down our service because uh, and, and that obviously will improve security the other thing that we have is um, it allows you to monetize the things but obviously monetization is a functional requirement i'm just mentioning just in case it comes up you can use throttling for monetization as well in cases where you can define a premium users a uh, premium user versus a non-premium user and maybe you can de define those requests that way. So how does it work? Well, you have your users, you have your API, and inside the API there are a bunch of you know services running or, or programs or whatnot. What happens is that we need to define a rule. In this case, I'm going to be using super or something really super simple, like two requests maximum each minute or per minute. And when we define a throttling rule, what is going to happen is that we will need to implement a throttling mechanism. So the, the idea of this is that when the request comes, the throttling mechanism will be checking if you are allowed to do it. In this case, will be by two minutes, or rather two times per minute. When that happens again, it will be checking again. And, and assuming that there is another request that is happening within that minute of time, it is going to be you know, failing and giving you an error. Now, let me show you how this works in real life. As usual, the code of this example will be linked in the description. The implementation is really simple because we're using a package called toll booth. Uh, and this toll booth implements the rate limiter that it actually implements a throttler behind the scenes. And it allows you to, uh, to use the implementation that they have for as a middleware that we can add into our existing REST server that we implemented previously. I just want to show you a few different options that they have because it's important to you know, to use them depending on the use, the use case that you have. This one that you see right here is how many times per the duration that you're indicating, uh, which in this case is um, uh, an hour in this example. I'm going to be using one second, so this is so it triggers automatically and you can see what's happening. And there are a few different ways to indicate where the values are going to be coming from. You can specify concrete uh, endpoints or requests or resources rather. You can specify perhaps uh, uh, authentication headers or, or a way to uh, um, differentiate the different requests requests in a different way. By default, it uses these values, which will be the IPs. But again, you can specify any header that you want. This specific package does not support a way to uh, have a distributed data store that can be used across multiple instances of the same service. Uh, however, I will be linking in the description a few different ways to implement something similar that you can use a distributed data store for doing something like this. So let's jump into our Swagger UI. Let me load my database store, or not my database store, my database um, explorer uh, for looking at the tasks that we created previously. And I'm just going to try out any, uh, any endpoint that I have. So it's failing because I didn't run the actual server. So let's run it. It's, uh, you know, we did this a few times already. So it's going to be initializing, you know, doing the, the whole usual uh, steps. It's already running. So if I execute this again, it will be working. Now, if I try to execute it uh, quickly by a second, I believe I put three three seconds, three times, I'm sorry. Uh, it will still give, it will give you an error. I don't know if you saw that. There, I have reached my maximum request limit. And really the, the way this works, this package work is super simple and uh, it shouldn't be that difficult for implementing it when uh, in in your actual project. I 
meant to delete this extra comment but it's basically what i'm trying to define here is the limiter which is going to be three maximum per second and it's going to be adding it as the middleware and i'm literally just passing that to the http server and that's it i mean pretty straightforward nothing really complicated but like i said the whole point of this is that uh, to understand how the throttling works the implementation is most of the times really easy to to do so let's jump into the conclusions and i will talk to you in a moment all right, so that's it about throttling. It's a really simple concept. There are different algorithms, and I will be linking a few different packages in Go, as well as, well as the actual uh, Wikipedia pages that describe those set algorithms, and you can you can you can play around with them. Uh, again, the package that I use is called Tollbooth. It supports uh, a few different options that, like I mentioned, but it's really really simple to implement. And well, that's it for this episode. Any comments or any questions, just let me know and I will talk to you next time. Okay, take care. See you.